Today is Nature Run Amok, Killer Animal Styles. James is picking between the bees, the giant spider invasion, or here, picky, 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 picky. Which one will he pick? Which one? Which one are we watching? You gotta pick a movie. <laughs> you don't wanna watch any of them? No? Okay, so we got the bees, spiders, or pigs. Not the bees. Not spiders. Oh, wait, maybe spiders. No, nope, not spiders. Not pigs. Or, yes pigs, no. Yes, but no, not sp spiders. Bees. Which one? Mm. Not bee bees? You wanna, oh. Well, okay, not spiders. Not bees, okay, I guess we're going with pigs. And he really doesn't want any of these. <laughs>
driving down a dirt road and takes one, you know, fork in the road and there's this cafe that seems like it's in the middle of the desert type thing and uh, nobody's there but she goes in and uh, gets a job. Because <laughs> apparently I guess this has like five people in the town and they all eat there or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, the guy who owns the cafe also has some pigs. And local locals think the pigs, he's feeding humans to the pigs, and the pigs are humans, or something along those lines. I don't know. Uh-oh. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, yeah, pumpkin. Here's your pumpkin. It's pumpkin with pumpkin with the ears. Yeah. <laughs> No, James, honey. Buddy, where are you going? So, no, don't put, don't put it down there. It won't come back if you put it down there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so these pigs in behind the cafe do have a taste for, oh, bye, buddy. He's taking off. Do have a taste for human flesh for some reason. And so the uh, the mental, mentally ill young Lynn. Um, well, she she starts offing people, and the owner of said cafe decides to feed them to his pigs. <laughs> and that's pretty much the story. The film is directed by Mark Lawrence, also written by Mark Lawrence. Now, Mark Lawrence is mostly known as a character actor. He's not really known as a writer nor a director. Um, this was the last film he directed. Um, and, you know, I think he only directed like one other film, but he's known as an actor. With over 200 credits to his name. No. James. <gasps> okay, I gotta take you away. His, and this is the thing, he was working up until 2003, and he died in 2005 at the age of 95 years old. This guy is what you call a working actor. His last role, Acme VP, stating the obvious from Looney Tunes back in action. <laughs> he was also in End of Days. He was in From Dusk Till Dawn. He was in Newsies. Um, <gasps> no. Don't take that out, buddy. He was in Night Train to Terror, Savage Journey. Um... Cataclysm, Super Fuzz, television shows, uh, Wonder Woman, and Chips, and Dukes of Hazards. Um, before this film, he was in Honor Thy Father. After this film, he was in Frasier, The Sensuous Lion. He's all over the place, I'm telling you. In fact, he, he um, was big into a lot of the old... Uh, westerns and gangster films um, to the point where the Italian mafia, actual mobsters, s often credited him as being one of the best representations of themselves ever to be on screen. <laughs> so that being said, Is there anything else going for it? Well, it's got Tony Lawrence playing the mentally ill Lynn. And, well, unfortunately, <laughs> this was her first film, which you can imagine probably didn't go over too well. But eventually, she ended up in 11 episodes of Days of Our Lives and the film Soul Survivor B. 
beyond reason and donor. Honestly, she wasn't in much of anything. Coming back, buddy. All right. You got to stay here, though. Can't be moving around. Um, also in the film is... Well, I guess there's... Ow! Stop pulling on my chest hair, buddy. What are you doing? Pulling, yeah. Um... Is obviously, um, you know, the Zambrini character, who is the owner of the cafe, which was played by Mark Lawrence. <laughs> yes, he wrote, directed, and starred in the film. That's how talented this man was. Um, <laughs> other people were um, the sheriff, Dan Cole, played by Jesse Vint. Now, Jesse Vint. Um, is known from all sorts of things. Again, he was in a few westerns and such, but he was also in Chinatown, where he played the farmer in the valley, and Silent Running, where he played Andy Wolf. Um, so we got some actual, and I mean, there's a few other people in this, but um, we actually have some, uh, a few people. No. James, please don't touch the camera. James. Come here. Come here. So, there are a few. Come here. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. James, I said don't touch the camera. to be said about this film. It's also known as Daddy's Deadly Darling and The Strange Exorcism of Lynn Hart. Um, it's an interesting little film. Um, it opened with um, the trauma. Lloyd Kaufman, Michael, you know, Michael Herr's opening thing, which um, I didn't realize this was a trauma release. Because I, I, I don't know. I, I thought I'd seen pretty much all of the trauma films, but apparently I missed this one at some point. Um, it's... It's an interesting film. It's... It's got its problems. It's definitely got its problems. Um, it re relies a lot on loud noises, both the sound of the pigs and screaming and loud, just loud yellings and such. Um, I think partly, you know, it's partly to be the scary pigs, partly to be people being tormented, partly to be... Uh, people, you know, like mental instabilities. Um, it, it's used for a lot of different reasons. Um, to the point where I started, well, it was getting really annoying. Um, I think had they, they kept it to being, you know, like about the pigs and whatever the pigs were involved, probably would have been a little bit more along lines of being acceptable but considering it, it just sort of showed up all sorts of different places i was like why why are they doing these weird noises and why do they sound like you know like godzilla monster noises like <laughs> it's like they took the 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 noises that japan, japan was putting on their kaijus and put them as the, the backdrop in this movie um the pigs were a little disappointing. I was hoping there was going to be more, more, more pig carnage. Um, there's a little bit, but but not as much. Um, the story itself is a little. When you when you tell it and you break it down, it's easier, you know, in writing when you when you sort of explain the film than it is when you're actually watching it. 
Um, it's not clear so much as to what's really going on. Um, once you've been informed of what you know everything is about the film, uh, you could go back and watch it and you could probably piece things together. But when you're just watching it by itself, um, it's like it's missing bits or things are just maybe not in the right order or maybe they're missing um, a little bit of explanation here and there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, this is, this is, this is B-movie territory. This is definitely B-movie territory. It's, um, the blood is, as Sarah said, that's not realistic. Um, well, no, from the 19, way back then, they, they making realistic blood wasn't easy. They, did, they hadn't come up with realistic blood very much. Um, there weren't too many films that did really good realistic blood. Often was using ketchup. Gotcha. Um, okay. right. So, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why Texas Chainsaw really, really hit home because the, 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 the blood and the gore and the, everything about that was like, wow, you know, like this isn't that beat red blood we see on, on hammer films and, and the B movies and, and such like that. Right. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is, you know, stab with knife and ketchup blood coming down or paint probably. Probably red paint in this case. Um, bright red paint at that. Um, you know, it's coming down and just from one stab they're like, ah, and then they die, right? Um, <laughs> and, and it's funny, it's... The, the, there are some, several moments where people are being attacked and killed and it reminded me of some of the um, Italian films where, you know, you see the person, you know, stabbing or something. They're like, ah, ah, ah. And then you cut to the person being stabbed. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. But you never actually see both the stabbing arm and the person being stabbed in the same frame, right? Um, so it, that was quite quite funny. I didn't have a problem with that. I just I just thought it was hilarious that 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 was in the film the way they 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 went with it. Um, I actually kind of enjoy that. It's 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 a weird, a really really weird thing to watch because it's so fake. But at the same time, you're like it's visually it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, this is this is not for this is not the kind of film that's for mainstream horror fans. Um, it's it's not exactly scary. It's not exactly gory. It's not exactly good. It's not yeah. This is Leslie says it's not exactly good. No, this this is you know like this is. It's funny. Had they made the story a little more straightforward. Instead of, you know, mixing it up a little bit, I think it probably would have played a bit better. I find with a lot of the B-movies, when they try and be a little... I don't know if they're, it's artistic or if they're trying to be... Um, not forthcoming with everything. Um, that it kind of hurts because they don't have a lot of budget. It's almost like they probably had a whole bunch of other scenes they would have loved to have shot, but, you know, they just ran out to time and money, right? Because you do what you can and you, you get whatever you, you can in, in the bag and you put it together and hopefully, you know, maybe they just didn't think everything through. I don't know, but... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe if I looked at the script for this film, I, I'd be able to... I'd see it. It's exactly what they were trying to do and... And as a result, it was like, yeah, no, well, okay. Um, just to just to clue you in, you don't really know that the the girl is um, crazy until well through the film, and she actually comes off as being the um, sort of like a girl in distress, a girl in trouble um, at the beginning almost. Um, maybe on the run from, who knows, maybe an abusive boyfriend or something like that, right? Uh -huh. 
it's, it's hard to say um, because they don't really explain anything. And then eventually you find out, oh, no, she, she's, she's crazy and, you know, yeah. she's dangerous. <laughs> and it's like, well, by that point, it's a little too late. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know why they, they kept that a secret, really. Yeah. Right? They hinted to things... Uh, right from the get-go, but it wasn't hints that would really clue you into anything other than the fact that she was kind of on the run. But, um, yeah, that being said, if I had to give this movie a rating, um, I'd probably give it a two. Um, two because there is some killing and the pigs eat people. And I like it when pigs eat people. I just wish they ate more people in this movie. Um, there's a couple of humorous portions in the film. I don't think it's intentional, um, but I did get you know get a smile or a chuckle here and there. And um, yeah, would I would I recommend it if you're into B movie exploitation type stuff, that kind of horror? Um, this is probably along your lines. If you're into trauma films, this this seems less trauma than you might think um it's i'm trying to think it's probably closer to uh children or um uh what's that the children uh Children should play with the dead, or I don't know. There's beware children at play, or ch I don't know, kids at play, or I don't know. The one with the killer kids, um, or maybe even grannies. Though grannies is it does have quite a bit of humor in it comparatively. Um, it's along those lines, almost like you know, like it's the serious type of thing. I don't even know if this really is a trauma film, or if they just got the elements from trauma. Because, I don't know. Oh, um, maybe if I did a bit more research. But usually when that trauma thing comes up at the beginning of the movie, you know it's a trauma movie. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it was it, it was a little bit of a letdown. A little bit of a letdown. I, I was hoping for a bit more from this. Um, honestly, I was hoping a bit more from the pigs. It's It's... It's disappointing that the pigs weren't the killers so much as the just the people who were eating body parts. But eh still doesn't affect the fact that it makes me want bacon. Mm, bacon. We're going. Anyways, let me know if you've seen pigs. Comment down below. Keep it spoiler-free as much as possible, though I've pretty much told you the entire film somehow. Um, but, yeah. Let me know. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Till next video, take care. Have a good one. Stop.